dude just doesn't care what the West thinks. Dang, bro. You must not, in the name of political correctness, now say, oh, because we want IMF. We seldom forget, but we must never forget that 18 million Africans. We must never forget that over 12 million Africans were taken. We must never forget the apartheid regime was underwritten through verses from the Bible. We must never forget that. Fact. That is the theology that is now beginning to emerge from Europe and America. It is the same people who came here in 19, 1800s and gave us the penal code. That was the offense, sex against the order of nature. They are telling me when nature changed, that in the last day there shall be a form of Christianity. We are people will be lovers of themselves and they manufacture new sins like LGBTQ. We must re-examine our theology. For those of you that know Plo Lumumba, a great African lawyer, activist, speaker, pastor, psychiatrist, among many other areas that usually makes a person too smart to be considered a human being, <laughs> people pay big money to have his wisdom and understanding taught to them in universities, churches, on political stages, which is why, for those of us who don't have a lot of money or go to Harvard or Oxford, one of those big colleges, but want the insight and education of the, one of the greatest minds that ever walked the planet, listen to Professor Plo Lumumba. Uh, that's one of the reasons he's fearless because he stands boldly with the truth and he has all of the knowledge behind it to back it up the facts. So get ready to be graced with a chain-breaking lesson of biblical, historical, and revolutionary proportions that will help anyone strengthen their inner resolve in their hearts, souls, and minds. So I encourage you to watch this throughout with me. One love, join, grab a drink if you're thirsty, and give your thoughts down below. The Bible that I read also tells me in Matthew 24, 24, that in the last day, there'll be many Christs. They'll come, and they are coming now, many of them. They shall work wonders, and that they would even lead the very elect, but for divine intervention. That Bible I read, and I suspect you also read the same Bible. The Bible that I read in Paul's second letter to Timothy at 3 also tells me that in the last day, there shall be a form of Christianity. We are people who will be lovers of themselves. And they would cheat everybody just like Janus and Jambres did to Moses in the desert. I read that Bible. I also read another Bible, verse in the Bible, Roman 1, 30, that shall people shall be lovers of themselves and they will have committed all sins and they manufacture new sins like LGBTQ. So nowadays I go to church and pastors are equivocating. My own church, I saw in England, the clergy coming complete with the dog's collar, apologizing for people who are engaged in LGBTQ. Saying that God loves them. Yes, he does, but God does not love sin. And the last time I checked and the Bible has not been revised, one of the reasons why Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed was because they engaged in those. So, when you ask me to talk about the role of theology and the problems bedeviling Africa, I'm situating my presentation in those biblical verses, which are clear and unequivocal. Africa and Africans, like all peoples, face numerous problems, and human beings face numerous problems. We seldom forget, but we must never forget that this continent and her people were enslaved. We must never forget that. You must never forget that 18 million Africans were taken from the eastern part of Africa into the Arab world and men were castrated. You must never forget that. Because the effect of it is with us today. We must never forget that over 12 million Africans were taken and taken to the Caribbean, taken to Europe and America. We must never forget that. We must never forget that in Southern Africa, the apartheid regime 
was underwritten through verses from the Bible by the Dutch Reformed Church. You must never forget that. Upon a theology based in the Bible. Fact. We must never forget that the Roman Catholic Church was involved in slavery and they have apologized for it. We must never forget that the Church of England was involved in slavery and they have apologized for it using the Bible. Theology. Slaves, obey your masters like you obey Christ in the Bible. Not revised. You go and read it. There is a verse like that. So when we talk about theology and African problems, we must remember that the effects of slavery are alive and with us today. After slavery, colonization came. And as I speak to you, Europeans sat in Berlin in 1884 and 1885 and divided Africa into spheres of influence. Africa was a hunting ground divided amongst the British, the Italians, the Dutch, the French, the Belgians, the Germans. And today we are in this assembly. I'm using English language which was imposed on us. And those of you who come from English speaking countries, you referred to as Anglophone. Those of you who come from French speaking countries, you are referred to as Lusof, as a Francophone. And those from Portuguese are referred to as Lusophone. Soon there'll be Sinophone. We don't speak Yoruba. I'm not speaking Yoruba. I'm not speaking Kiswahili. There is no Kiswahili interpreter here. They are only French and Portuguese and English. Part of the African problem. We are confused. When my friend resisted their being called a perfect Frenchman, I could understand his anger because the colonial project was a dehumanizing and humiliating process. And religion and theology were at the heart of it. I'm now trying to suggest to you that theology can be useful, but theology must be decolonized. If we don't decolonize theology, then we will continue to believe that the theology handed down to us is what is going to solve our problems. And permit me to be a little bit uh, unsettling. You know... When you look at the Anglican Church, I understand how it was created. King Henry VIII wanted to annul his marriage with Catherine of Aragon in order to marry Anne Boleyn and establish the Church of England. And for it, St. Thomas More was executed. That is not a very good beginning. As we speak now, the head of the Anglican Church is the king of England. That is the titular head of the Anglican Church. Established. Now, if you want that theology where the head of the Anglican Church is my head to solve my African problems, can they solve my African problems? No. When they are now saying that before they give African aid and ask Uganda, they must follow LGBTQ. I personally was the victim of a demonstration in South Africa because I had spoken firmly and unequivocally against LGBTQ. When I went to deliver a lecture at Cape, uh, Cape Town University, there were demonstrations against me on the 29th of May. Ten years ago, South Africa did not know who you are today, they recognize who you are. But while Lumumba was addressing party supporters, the voices of dissident students could be heard from outside expressing their critique of the professor and their disappointment in the EFF. But I said, that is what I believe in. And we must not equivocate, we must not in the name of political correctness now say, oh, because we want IMF and World Bank to help Africa, therefore we must say, but God loves everybody. 
Yes, indeed he does. But he tells you to do things in a particular way. If we allow aberrations to be mainstreamed, then there is no sin. We are going, getting into a level where there is no untruth. Everything is right. Everything depends. That is the theology that is now beginning to emerge from Europe and America. He is going to be the dominant theology. And he is going to have everything pegged on it. Uganda has had aid cut from it. Because the Ugandan president has spoken about it. We are still talking about the problems bedeviling Africa. IMF is saying we are inclusive. It is the same people who came here in 1980s and gave us the penal code which had some sex against the order of nature. That was the offense. Sex against the order of nature. Now tell me, when did nature change? Yeah, tell me when nature changed. And we must say this whether people are angry or not. Because if we want to change Africa, we must not fear to speak the truth as we know it. Because if you fall for everything, there is a Kiswahili saying, he who abandons his culture and traditions is a slave. There is another Kiswahili saying, say, Jishinde, Ushinde, conquer yourself that you may be a victor. Africans must make that choice. In order for all these problems to begin to disappear, we must re-examine our theology. So someone may say that this is too spiritual for them and they have bigger concerns, but others may feel that the mind cannot be separated into pieces and that every thought and intent of the heart is aligned by another thought. And a little bit of leaven may leaven, it will leaven the whole lump. If you bake bread, you cannot separate the leaven from it and it's now all part of itself. And the mind is a powerful yet fragile masterpiece that has been designed to, to imagine, to create, and to bring forth both spiritual and natural manifestations into being. These powerful words of Plo Lumumba, not only for the ears to hear, but the, for the earth to create. As God created everything we see on this earth in his image, he imagined it, he imaged it, and then he spoke it and he said, let there be light, and there was light. By faith we speak things into existence, for we were created in his image. He said to speak that thing that be not as though it is, and you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and you will have whatsoever you say it. Let there be light, there was light. Let there be peace, there shall be peace. Speak in faith and we will see it. It's how we were given the name Speak and See, just to let you know the inside scoop on the name of our channel, Speak and See, which I hope is one of your channels too. So with blessings and peace, I say I will hopefully see you soon and one love.